In today's society, smart healthcare has been closely integrated into our healthcare system. When deploying smart technology, where do we find solutions that meet needs? The answer is HealthSmart Taiwan. Its extensive service modes provide the latest industry R&D news, in addition to abundant case studies and solutions. HST selects smart healthcare applications that were awarded the National Healthcare Quality Award and incorporates diverse smart healthcare demo sites. HST displays the efficiency of Taiwan's smart healthcare applications. As an industry solutions for healthcare issues, Crossfield Integrative Platform, HST is able to solve key challenges and difficulties of healthcare institutions. HST your answer to smart healthcare and cross industry cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to International Smart Healthcare Forum. The forum will start in just one minute. May I remind you that if you have any questions to our speakers, please scan the QR code. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please uh, welcome to the session one of International Smart Healthcare Forum, one of the highlight forums of Smart Healthcare Expo. Organized by Joint Commission of Taiwan, Taipei Computer Association, Taiwan Smart City Solutions Alliance, and Asian Society for Quality in Healthcare. This forum is an optimum platform for healthcare professionals as well as field researchers and practitioners to present innovative solutions and to discover the latest trends in the smart healthcare market. We are excited to invite leaders from prestigious hospitals and smart healthcare businesses to share how ICT and AIoT technologies are applied to realize the cross-institutional integration and improving emergency medical services. Now, allow me to introduce our distinguished guest today. Please wave your hand when your name is called. First, our moderator today is Mr. Qi Zhenling, President of Joint Commission of Taiwan. 
Next is Professor Wei Chun Huang, Director of Department of Critical Care Medicine, Kaohsiung Veterans General Hospital. Please also welcome Mr. Sim Tsai, General Manager of ViewLead Technology. Following Mr. Tsai is Professor Qi Sheng Hong, Associate Professor of Department of Internal Medicine of National Taiwan University Hospital. We would also like to welcome Mr. Lu Zhe Xu, Vice President of Software RD Headquarters of Campo Electronics. We will now take a virtual group photo of all the guests to capture this special moment on camera. Gentlemen, please look into your camera, smile, and put your thumb up as we take a screenshot of this video conference. Ready, set, smile. Thank you for joining the group photo shooting. With so many recognized elites in the field, today's forum is certainly expected to be enlightening. To begin with, Mr. Qi Zhenling, President of Joint Commission of Taiwan, will be delivering the opening remarks. Mr. Ling is serving as the Distinguished Professor in National Chengkong University, as well as an attending physician of Department of Orthopedic Surgery in National Chengkong University Hospital. Please welcome Mr. Ling with a round of applause. All of our guest speakers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to attend this forum entitled Cross-Institutional Integration, using telehealth to provide emergency medical services and the chronic disease care. I'm the chairperson of this forum, Professor Chi Jin Lin. I'm also the president of Joint Commission of Taiwan, named the JCT. I'm honored to explain that Smart Healthcare Expo, namely SHE, International Smart Healthcare Forum, is hosted by JCT with a mission to share Taiwan's experiences in innovation and applications of digital healthcare with other countries. Such SHE activity has been held for the seven consecutive years while this forum is one of the SHE series. Due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemics, this series had to be conducted online, unfortunately. JCT is the national accreditation body of Taiwan in charge of not only all the hospital accreditation, but also quality improvement activities of Taiwan. Consequently, it is in charge of nationwide quality improvement campaign for more than 20 years. In recent years, it is getting clear that we need help from IT technology to improve the healthcare quality. That is why we cooperate with the Taipei Computer Association, TCA, to sponsor this wonderful event. Today, I sincerely welcome you to enjoy the following four talks, including two from the healthcare IT industry and two from the hospital specialists to share with you the best developments of the IT solutions in terms of quality improvement in healthcare. In fact, there will be three forums scheduled in this year, while this is the first one. The other two forums will be held on the 6th and the 26th of August, in which you may also be of your interest. In this forum, please be focused on the key issue of telehealth, remote technology with medical device, pre-hospital emergency care, and the continuous care after discharge Critical applications in heart disease di diseases will be focused today. The future two forums will continue to discuss the application of the telehealth in the management of kidney disease and the specific application of medical AI. By the end of all four talks, there will be a 20 minutes panel discussion. Questions are welcome from all participants, while answers will be given by your appointed speakers. I do believe that you will enjoy this forum 
in this wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ling. We are honored that today's presentations will be kicked off by Pro Professor Wei Chun Huang, Director of Department of Critical Care Medicine, Kaohsiung Veterans General Hospital. He is also currently the Fellow of European Society of Cardiology and American College of Cardiology and the President of Taiwan Myocardial Infarction Society. He will be sharing under the topic of Ambulance Pre-Hospital Electrocardiography System Saves Lives of Patients with Acute Myocardial Infarction. Please welcome Professor Huang. Uh, President and ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to be here to present this uh, topic. Uh, this is uh, uh, my CV. Uh, I come from the KSVGH. We have Ninnan. We call Kaohsiung Very Good Hospital. So you can very easy to remember our hospital name. Uh, as as you know, the acute myocardial infarction, time is muscle, time is life. So we have to save the patient as soon as possible once they get the acute myocardial infarction. So uh, this is a coronary artery or coronary graphy. Uh, if this is our patient, the LD uh, coronary artery total cushion, so how long can we wait? Uh, after open up the artery, we can save up to 30 to 50% of uh, myocardium. So we should save the AMI as soon as possible. From ischemia to balloon time, it's very important to influence the uh, mortality, even one year's mortality. So shorter is better. But the good ischemia to prolong time is based on good ischemia to dole time. Uh, before, before they transfer to a uh, hospital, it's very important. Uh, so <clears throat> we set up the pre-hospital ECG system in Taiwan. Uh, this system can reduce the ischemia time, can immediate diagnosis by machine or expert, and also early activation of cardiovascular team. And, and also can prevent the patient transfer to non-PCI, no carcinoma uh, hospital because the uh, uh, intervention is still the uh, first uh, <coughs> therapy for the uh, AMI patient. Uh, because transfer between hospital, if they transfer to wrong hospital, it take maybe up to one to two hours, maybe the patient die on the transfer. So it's a very important to diagnose immediately. So actually in a uh, different uh, country or different city, there's a different uh, design of pre hospital system. In America, they have uh, many uh, staff, you know, seven um, paramedical and uh, professional paramedical. So they can transfer like uh, uh, emergency department outside the hospital. Uh, in Taiwan or Asia, actually there's only maybe two or three paramedical and no any doctor on the ambulance. And in European or China, there has they had the uh, uh, paramedical and the doctor on the ambulance. So we try to set up a system in Taiwan. It's been, it's over, been a over a year since the attack. attack. But I'll never forget, forget that, that day. I swam out. Same as always. Towards the point. Out to the back line. Then it hit me. Like a truck. Straight in the chest. Unbearable pain on the left side of my body. I couldn't breathe. And then the lights went out. So we know the acute myocardial cardiac arrest may be may happen any times. So we set up the smart healthy care system for the acute myocardial infarction. And the first step, we set up the ambulance uh, electrocardiography. We, we will ab abbreviation as the ECG. 
automatic interpre interpretation system. So uh, in this system, so the uh, ambient staff can use a machine to uh, <clears throat> perform the automatic interpretation so they can transfer the patient very quickly. The importance of the ECG AI system, the paramedical can immediately decide whether to transfer to a cast a lab hospital uh, or the nearby hospital. Without the system, the baby may be transferred to the uh, nearby hospital, but uh, without the cast lab. So they have to transfer, maybe delay the treatment time and maybe uh, <clears throat> uh, the patient lost their life. So there's a several category to uh, <clears throat> interpret the uh, ECG by AI system. Actually, in the uh, there's a different system in Taiwan at this moment. Uh, one system they can interpret the ECG uh, on the machine, and that one system never transfers the signal to the tablet. And that one system they use the server. Actually, the time is different. On the machine is very uh, direct. So uh, after maybe two, 10, 10 or twenty seconds, they can see the result very quickly. On the tablet, they use a uh, 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 Bluetooth to transfer to the tablet on on the ambulance so they can see the result maybe later later about 30 seconds and that system they have transferred the system to 199 center so after the system interpretation they will transfer uh, the server they will transfer this uh, result to the ambulance maybe it take longer time uh, than others uh, in in our system, actually, initially we uh, interpret, uh, we test the system. The, they have high sensitivity, about eighty five percent digit. That, this is good. We can exclude the false negative. Most uh, uh, past patient can include into the system, so we can transfer the patient into the right uh, right hospital. Uh, another uh, <coughs> smart key intervention is ambulance ECG telemetry. So so the ECG, uh, if the event, the patient will call 911 or 119, when they uh, ambulance on the side, they can interpret the EG, perform the ECG ambulance and uh, uh, interpret the ECG by themselves or by a machine. A signal will transfer to server and server will transfer the signal to the doctor. So which doctor should they transfer? So who interpret ECG? In Taiwan, actually, almost 90% uh, hospital Cardiologist activation the activate the castron and uh, about ten percent uh, by ED doctor, but there's a difference of the cardiology and the ED physician to interpret ECG maybe ten or twenty percent difference. So force active maybe uh, induced waste of manpower. So we suggest system should transfer to uh, cardiology directly. So what the method to transfer the uh, <coughs> signal to the patient? One is use message and uh, they open up the uh, app software, they can see the ECG very quickly. And now once they use the email, they uh, transfer from the server. And also another uh, group, they use line. So you can use the uh, software to open up the uh, ECG very quickly. And previous, some of the area, they use the tech photo and the transfer by line. But, but it takes time not to, uh, not to transfer by machine itself. And the one they transfer to the website, so the doctor can uh, open up the uh, computer to see uh, result of ECG. And as a, so, so the uh, interpret is very important. So we also set up the adequate hospital transfer STEMI network. Uh, we set up the uh, we divide the hospital into twenty four hours PCI hospital or PCI hospital. So in our city, we have a uh, 26, 24 hours PCI hospital. They can receive the patient at the 24 hour basis. One is a daytime PCI hospital. They didn't, uh, they didn't do the uh, PCI at the night. So uh, the, uh, <coughs> the ambulance will transfer to the hospital only on the day. And we also collaboration with the nearby city, Tainan city. So the Paramedical will will depend. We see the result of the uh, ECG and the transfer to the right hospital uh, by standard operation procedure.
And also we uh, invention the uh, ECG examine accessory device. So we, we set up the innovation when ultra rapid the ECG. So we use a single uh, pet for for the all for all the paramedical then use the system to do the ECG very quickly because usually if you don't uh, family with the ECG permission, maybe it take five minutes or ten. 250 seconds on the ambulance. Actually, time is muscle, so we should save the patient as soon as possible. We, uh, we imagine uh, two different stages. Uh, early stage, we use the fabric, and the later stage, we use the transparent uh, silicone material. So you can see the uh, anatomy very quickly and put on the device, you can uh, perform the ECG very quickly. Actually, after testing, the ECG is the meantime can reduce from 250 seconds to 30 seconds. Uh, so only 30 seconds we can save the patient's life. And our system also get the uh, Korea intervention, invention and Geneva invention, uh, American in in the physical intervention and the Taipei and the Kaohsiung intervention, Golden or Panting Award. And also we get the National Innovation and the National Invention Award. Uh, we also get the other, including the Germany or Malaysia or uh, Poland and uh, Canada and also Silicon Valley American uh, Golden Award. So uh, we also divide the second stage of the uh, device. So uh, we, we Im embrace the cable inside our system. So it's very easy. You don't have to, uh, <clears throat> you don't have to connect one by one. So you only put our device onto uh, according to the in intercoastal intercoastal uh, line and also interneeple line. So put on the uh, device. They can prefer the EKG maybe within ten seconds more quickly. Our our invention also get the uh, uh, four uh, patent in Taiwan. Uh, and our system, we set up the ECG incentive and the auditing system in our city. So uh, actually, insistent regulation for saving the STEMI patient is very important. So all the paramedical, if they save the AMI patient, they can get uh, uh, 30 American dollars for each, each paramedical. And, and also we set up the auditing system. So all the captain of fire brigade, they have pro provide the ECG report monthly, you can make sure they did the ECG uh, correctly and the regular. Mooting 呃, so in Taiwan, there's uh, two different uh, pre-ambulance uh, ECG system. One is all-in-one. Uh, in previous, there's a uh, uh, <coughs> machine for Medtronic and Philip, but not used at the moment. And also now, uh, most popular, uh, the all-in-one system is Zo system, and also uh, some system from Japan, but it's not used in Taiwan. Uh, in Zo system, the advantage is they have they can use as a monitor, also has a defibrillator on site. But the, the advantage is more expensive, maybe uh, three times or four times than a sim simple ECG. And the weight is more heavy. But some of about five cities use uh, this uh, system, some of five big use, use this system. And that system that only do the simple pre hospital ambulance ECG, they only did the ECG. Uh, previous Taiwan Biosense company also produced system but not used at this moment. Another Italian or China or Germany uh, group also test the system, but uh, 
is not used to assist at, at this moment. In Taiwan, the first uh, simple uh, pre-hospital ambulance CT come from the EBM Motara. Uh, the uh, the same advantage is they don't have monitor and deprivation, but usually ambulance has AD, so they don't need the deprivation. But the, the uh, advantage is more light and also uh, uh, also cheap. So many city use this system as starting. Uh, and later on, EBM, because uh, uh, this system is out of part, so uh, EBM produce uh, another system use a cooperation with the China Eden company. So uh, the system can use one touch to perform the ECG and uh, uh, also interpret the ECG by itself. And also Eden company by other uh, Taiwan uh, agent also produce another a tablet with the ECG system. So ECG can transfer by the uh, <coughs> Bluetooth to the uh, <coughs> to the uh, tablet so they can interpret the result. And some of city use uh, these two system. Uh, uh, another one from uh, Japan, Nihon company. So uh, the, this machine is more big and heavy. Uh, only Pinton City uses this system. They also can transfer the ECG by line to the line group. And another company from Taiwan, uh, Car Cardiac uh, Cardiac Wireless Company, say they, they use a uh, OED machine, uh, use their system to set up system uh, in on the ambulance. Uh, in uh, many city, use uh, about six or seven city use uh, this uh, uh, device. Uh, another company for American UT Medical. Uh, it, it's more easy for patient to uh, put on the uh, ECG device, but the, the part is more expensive uh, when, because it's disposable. Only a uh, nine part of uh, and fabric uh, uses this system. And uh, actually, public ACS medic uh, education is very important because in in Kaohsiung City, only a, only. 5% of patient, uh, only 10% of patient use ambulance for transfer. So we create a slogan to remind ACS patient to call 119. If patient have a chest pain, dyspnea, or cost waiting, they should call the 119 as soon as possible. And, and, and at this moment, about the, uh, there's a, about the five, in, in Kaohsiung City, there's a, more than 5,000 cases uh, performed the ECG uh so uh could could i have a next slide thank you <clears throat> on this moment we save more than 300 uh in my patient by different uh, uh, hospital and also we set up a system in the whole city and we can reduce the door to bound time, also reduce the ischemia to bound time, and also reduce uh, save the patient's life, in, reduce the mortality. And uh, in this system, uh, after the uh, ECG intervention, we can also perform the ambulance medication. So we set up the Asian first ambulance paramedical STEMI uh, dual antiplate protocol on the ambulance. So in 2016, we start to do the uh, medication training and and uh, uh, we set up the uh, <clears throat> we are first uh, Taiwan city to set up the ambulance DATV protocol dual antiplate therapy protocol we donate our hospital donate the uh, medication to the city council so after two years uh, two months education uh, we have a first uh, Asian first uh, ambulance uh, DAPD cases so they can uh, pre prescribe the medication on the ambulance uh, very quickly. Uh, um, until now, there's uh, about uh, uh, 30 patients uh, <clears throat> uh, because uh, this is the same day live uh, by the uh, pre hospital dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, there's uh, two other cities also start to do the system at this moment. In Taiwan, actually, we promote the system uh, to the Penghu Island and also uh, <clears throat> Pintong, Pintong City, Pintong County. And also we promote system to other Taipei, including the Taipei or new Taipei city. And <clears throat> including the Taizong city, we also promote system to the Taizong, Xinzhou city and the Xinzhou county. 
uh, and also Yilan, uh, west, uh, east of the Taiwan, and the south of Taiwan, Tainan, and also uh, we promote system to Hualien and the Maoli city, and also Yunnan city, and also Zhanghua city, Zhanghua county. And also we promote to Jiayi city and the Jiayi county, and also uh, <coughs> Taoyuan, uh, tai, Taitung county, and also uh, Taoyuan county and the Nantou county. Uh, recently we promote this system to the air force. We set up the air force, the ECG system, while in the mountain or on the sea, we can perform the uh, ECG system on the uh, helicopter. We also set up the Taiwan guideline in the 2020. So in Taiwan, there's a more than 100 PCI hospital. So we suggest if patient have symptoms, as you said, that the patient by, by the ambulance and did the ECG on the ambulance. Uh, and also we, we in the future, we try to set up the AMI manager's smart platform. So all the system can transfer to the manager's smart system. So we can do the AI, intervention and also uh, perform the big data basis. Uh, in our system, get some award, including the JCT National Health Equality Award, and also other uh, more than uh, near to 500 award. And also we get the 33 international award, and including the National Innovation Award, also Vice, Vice President uh, Government Service Quality Award, and the President Outstanding Contribution Award of Public Servant. And also we was invited into the present the palace. And we set up, set up the Taiwan Myocardial Infarction Society and also invited by other uh, uh, other uh, other country to promote system. In 2016, Hong Kong also follow up step and Malaysia also follow up the step to set up system. In 2019, Euro PCR Stanford Life AMI, uh, AMDI Society also invite us as a champion of Taiwan. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we can see that from their website. And uh, we are on, only one and the first one hospital to get a WHO International uh, Hospital Federation uh, Grand Award, Golden Award. Sense, sense of your so sense for your attention. Uh, welcome to Taiwan. We have best of the SCCM in Taiwan in end of this year. Uh, sense. Thank you, Professor Huang, for your presentation. And now I would like to welcome Mr. Sam Tsai, General Manager of View Lead Technology. He specializes in anesthesia intelligence system, clinic information system of ICU, emergency medical service information system, and so on. His presentation today will be about integrating the resources of medical institutes to improve the efficiency of rescue services based on smart cloud dynamic EMS system. Mr. Tsai, you may have the floor. 
Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm the general manager of Yuli Technology. My name is Cai Zhenxian. You can call my English name Sam. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Today, I will sharing about Smart Cloud Dynamic System in Emergency Medical Service. Uh, we will briefly introduce our company. We will was founded in year 2006, mainly to build clinical information system in Taiwan. Now, we have 17 employees. I'm in charge here. Uh, come back to today's topic. Uh, the system is composed of two main systems. One is the mobile emergency room system that was built in 2012, uh, briefly known as MER. Another one is electronic patient care reporting system that was built in year 2017. Briefly, we call it EPCR. Uh, the design purpose of mobile emergency room system is how to use the information system to help clinical patients, including OCA patient, CVA patients, STEMI patient, and the major trauma patient. In the past, the rescue and the treatment of clinically ill patients has always been to send to the patient to hospital as soon as possible. However, we believe that the more important to improving the survival rate of patients is to be able to use the best resources in the best time to do the right treatment. Therefore, we use technology to integrate rescue roles medical equipment and the medical team, real-time delivery of patient condition information to each role in the rescue case, so that the patient can be evaluated and treated in the shortest time. Uh, in this picture, we can see there are five important roles involved in emergency medical service. The end point of MER is ambulance city, command center, ambulance unit, hospital. Furthermore, we have added the role of online duty position that is different from the traditional. Uh, MER system has a group of online instruction positions who use mobile phone app to schedule shifts on the system 24 hours a day. In rescue passes, the system will immediately notify the online instructor. Uh, physicians can use doctor app to obtain patient information during the entire rescue case and the guide EMT for medical treatment until to the hospital. The helmet worn by EMT and ambulance has action as camera in rescue. EMT will assess patient by MER app. Multifunctional the prelator can analyze 12 leads EKG report, major vital signs. All information will sent to each point by our own development transmission equipment in real time. When command center alert an ambulance case and the EMT dispatched, Doctor app 
where alert the doctor. Medical instructors can see the real-time image of patients vital sign 12 ETG on the app. And uh, they can use VOIP to guide the EMT. <clears throat> EMT app will provide hospital bed status and distance information for EMT as relevance. When they select a hospital, the MBR system in the ER of the hospital will warn and notify. Emergency medical staff can know the arrival time of the ambulance and the category of clinical ER patients. Through the real-time delivery information of the MER system, medical staff can prepare emergency supplies and the environment for patients in advance, such as case room for STEMI patients. This one shows the architecture of MER system. It was a 3G network. At present, the system has been running under the 4G network. We is to upgrade the system and the hardware equipment to the 5G network next year. Uh, this is the goal achieved by MER. The MER system enhances the possibility of data sharing, increase correspondent response time for each five ends, establish an open and complete data environment, involve, involve doctors' health into unseen operation. But the most important, the MER system operates viral rate and the prognosis of patients. Okay, it's EPCR. Uh, the MER system is mainly armed at errors case. EPCR system included BLS. Sometimes BLS may also become an ALS case during the ambulance. Combining the two, smart cloud image system has more complete functions of ambulance service. Now, this picture shows the main functions of EMT app after adding EPCR system. The app is designed according to the standard rescue process. In the past, EMT records data from patient uh, in the paper. Now they use iPad. The system has tools for EMT to quickly evaluate patients. Uh, this is a very important feature of the, the system. We put all types of ambulance knowledge in system. At a system database, the system can guide EMT how to evaluate patient. App also record vital sign automatically from system and pro provide nearby hospital information for EMT as a reference. Uh, we have GPS and an online instructor during the ambulance. When arrived at the hospital and the performed patient hand over by scanning the barcode. Command center and the system can see the operation status of ambulance resources 
on the map and get all information about the hospital capabilities and the status. Large panel of hospital emergency department, which is showed important message about patient. We use different color to represent different types of patients and the time of arrival at the hospital. Finally, we provide an API program for hospital to exchange information of hospital information system. All data is security encrypted. The hospital can use the system feedback the outcome of patient treatment in the hospital, in the EMB system database. It's good for analysis of the future rescue behaviors. The ambulance records database allows the ambulance team to review the execution process of a rescue case. There will improvement of EMT's knowledge and the ability in the future. Uh, this feature expresses the workflow of the entire system. After using the system network to integrate the citizen rescue resources, we develop MCI system. We believe that the functions of the MCI system must be established on this pre premise to be able to be efficiently utilized. When MCI event, EPCI app can convert the case to MCI case. Each ambulance, each ambulance endpoint will receive notification of MCI cases. The MCI system can provide civilian re rescue resource to join the rescue together. This is a com completed structure of the entire system. After 10 years of hard work, there are 127 online instructors. We connecting 23 hospitals in New Taipei City. Uh, I'm very happy that the system has been re recognized by awards, especially the IDC award in uh, 2021. But we, we are happier to hear the users tell us how the system help, helps them. But we are most happy about is that the, in the past 10 years, the 24 hours all-car survival rate of patients in New, New Taipei City has increased by 10%. Mm, life is free, is priceless. Nothing is more important than than this. Life is joyful. Thanks, Lord Jesus, for allowing our team and me. We are honored to pa participate in the development of this entire system. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Tsai, for your amazing insights. Next, Professor Qi Sheng Hong, Associate Professor of Department of Internal Medicine of National Taiwan University Hospital. He is not only serving as an Associate Professor, but the Attending Physician of Department of Internal Medicine of National Taiwan University Hospital, specializing in internal medicine, cardiology, intensive care medicine, and telemedicine. He is going to give a presentation on telehealth in the care of chronic cardiovascular disease. 
please give a warm applause to Professor Hong. Uh, good afternoon, President, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's my great pleasure to be invited in this conference. I'm Dr. Chi Sen Hong. Today, my topic is telehealth care in cardiovascular disease. I will focus on the care after discharge from a cardiac hospitalization. Telemedicine is a hot topic recently due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, we have witnessed a huge growth in telehealth during this pandemic. Technology giants, including Google, Microsoft, and Amazon have all invested heavily in this field. Telehealth use advanced technology to manage patients remotely. In contrast to conventional healthcare model, telehealth personnel have to rely on various sensors to de detect patients' vital signs and to collect physiology signals in order to manage patients remotely. After receiving this data, telehealth personnel process integrates this data and then makes appropriate response. There are three kinds of telehealth, uh, doctor to patient, doctor to doctor, and the patient to mobile health directly. Obviously, uh, different formats may need different sensors, data processing, and response. Uh, today, we will focus on the use of telehealth in cardiovascular disease, especially after discharge from an acute event. This big figure shows the general itinerary of cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease usually has a long asymptomatic stage. However, after an acute attack, cardiac function deteriorates. After the acute phase, it may recover, but usually not to the level uh, near the baseline, maybe lower than the baseline. After several acute attack, condition deteriorates uh, to a level which may not be compatible with life. Management of cardiovascular disease after an acute attack is to restore or maintain cardiac function to near baseline level and to prevent a further attack. Cardiovascular disease is a large uh, uh, term uh, including uh, several vascular disease, chronic heart disease, and peripheral vascular disease, and others uh, involve not only vessel heart, but also an organs. These diseases have many common risk factors. To improve, improve care after discharging from an acute hospitalization, we have to control these risk factors and to improve organ safety specific recovery. Uh, to improve the control of risk factors, we use hypertension as an example. The use of telemedicine to control hypertension has been explored extensively. Telemedicine facilitates home blood pressure recording, tracking, and analysis. Now we know home blood pressure is much more important than blood pressure taken in office. An integrated online platform like this uh, displayed patients' blood pressure uh, recordings, history of medications, and the life intervention, lifestyle interventions uh, all uh, in a, a screenshot. Health personnel can know the patient's hypertension com as control at a glance and responds to abnormal readings rapidly. They can adjust lifestyle management or medication accordingly. Efficiency is much better than convention, nor outpatient follow up, usually weeks to months later. In 2019, Hypertension Journal published a meta analysis on the use of telemedicine in hypertension. This analysis includes 
uh, 11 randomized control trials with more than 4,000 uh, patients. The result shows a sig significant decrease in systolic and diastolic blood pressure in the telemedicine group com compared with conventional group. In the following year, AHA, American Heart Association, published recommendations on the use of telemedicine in hypertension. For different target uh, population, you can choose different monitor and service to set up your telehealth system. In patients discharged from a cardiac hospitalization, they are regarded as high-risk group, and we should consider high level of monitor and service. Another issue for the care after the discharge is to prevent, detect, and early manage, manage an acute attack. Like Professor Huang mentioned in the first talk, an institute, institute to institute telehealth network has been set up in Latin America. This large network with a hub and spoke design transmit patients' data, especially EKG, to a coordinate center to make sure patients with acute coin syndrome acute or heart attack can receive timely revascularization. After an acute coin syndrome, ACS, uh, even with timely revascularization, the damaged heart still needs some uh, remodeling in the recovery phase. The use of beta broker ACI and ARB make sure the heart remodel in the right way, decrease the occurrence of post-ACS heart failure. This post-ACS management should be monitored as these drugs are not without side effects. Telehealth can facilitate the use of this drug during the recovery phase after ACS. In a pilot study published this year, the researchers from Singapore uh, tested this idea to use telemedicine in post-acute coin syndrome. Although the result did not show difference between a telehealth group and a conventional group, this study confirmed the feasibility of telemedicine in post-acute coin syndrome care. Cardiovascular procedures frequently involve puncture or incision to large vessels. Occasionally, uh, these procedures produce some complications, especially bleeding and infection. Uh, in this small study, telehealth monitor using a pre specified protocol and this device has been demonstrated to facilitate care after vascular intervention. Telehealth group has similar similar vascular complication and infection rate compared with conventional group. However, the best method to monitor remotely a surgical wound is still unknown. In this study, researchers want to test the feasibility to assess surgical wound remotely. After evaluating the photo of surgical wound in addition to the symptoms, and sim symptoms the specific increased but sensitivity decreased. The overall accuracy less than 60% is still not good enough. So this is a field requiring further researches. Telemedicine has also been studied extensively in heart failure. You can, you can find many reviews and meta analysis in the literature. Heart failure is a final common pathway of most cardiovascular disease and is frequently encountered after discharge from cardiovascular uh, hospitalization. There are some obstacles to the implement of telehealth medicine in heart failure, including uh, mixed study results, logistics, and the policy level. But I think this is a promising trend. Take a look in a recent study from German. Uh, they use a telemonitor device and show the significant improvement in all-cause mortality uh, in heart failure patients. 
we can see there are many uh, intense communications between telehealth team and the patient, as well as the adjustment of medications. To have good clinical results, devices are important, but the medical service may be more crucial. Telemedicine is also of great use after cardiac implants, such as pacemaker or intracardiac defibrillator or ICD. Wound healing after implantation can be managed, monitored as just mentioned. More important, as for device follow-up and arrhythmia detection, telemedicine is valuable in the subsequent management. With recent new implant model, intracardiac signal, signal can be recorded and transmitted by a gateway place at patient's home and transmit to cloud. In the trust trial, arrhythmia detection and device adjustment can be performed earlier compared with conventional monthly or longer follow-up. Even with earlier cardiac implant models without the function of remote transmission, the application of video conference clinic can have similar long-term result as compared with conventional office follow-up. Patient can save the time and the money of transportation to medical center only for cardiac implant follow-up. Physical activity is another aspect after cardiac hospitalization. Previously, we rely upon patients' report on the amount of exercise they performed. Now we have better tools to monitor their activities. This automatically recorded activity have been shown to, co shown to correlate with outcome. Apart from daily activity, a structured rehab program is also important after discharge. In the COVID era, some hospital has provided remote cardiac rehabilitation to do cardiac rehab at home with some training before discharge. In this program from Japan, the healthcare personnel monitor the patient's symptom and activity amount with telephone contact every two weeks for five months. With wearable device, Immediate monitor is also possible when patients perform cardiac rehab at home. With remote monitoring, exercise can be safely performed at home. In this uh, co Korean study, uh, they use a uh, wearable device to detect heart rate and blood pressure uh, during exercise. Telemedicine can be disease-specific. Uh, take uh, cabbage coin bypass surgery for an example. The post-cabbage care is a well-established process. Most of the components in this post-cabbage care process can be performed via telehealth. Even for the psychological aspect, post-cabbage telephone interview can, be, can provide a benefit. This is early study with a, a telephone, uh, old-fashioned telephone interview with patient uh, receiving uh, cabbage. And the result shows uh, even with simple telephone contact, this kind of uh, telehealth can improve patient's uh, psychological outcome after an operation. <clears throat> Use uh, this uh, figure, uh, we can see that uh, telemedicine in cardiovascular disease after discharge, they can focus on the uh, risk factor control, including weight management, uh, lipid management, diet and nutrition counseling, uh, blood pressure and smoking cessation to uh, promote a patient to do better lifestyle uh, control. And it, they can 
uh, assess the patient's uh, symptoms after uh, uh, discharge. And they can assess the patient's activity and uh, uh, condition when they're doing uh, uh, cardiac rehab and even support their psychological aspect. So uh, this is uh, my final slide. Uh, let me uh, summarize today's talk. Telehealth is a form of uh, health care. It can provide better monitor and patient support after a cardiac hospitalization. It can save transportation and minimize the exposure in pandemic. However, there are still challenges there. Sensors, technology, telehealth personnel, and cost. Further clinical trials and innovative minds are needed to improve this care model. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Hong, for the informative presentation. Our last speaker will be Mr. Richard Xu, Vice President of Software RD Headquarters of Campo Electronics. He holds 10 years of solid academic background in both EE and CSIE, along with over 30 years experiences in research, engineering, product management, sales and marketing, startup and BU. Today, he will be demonstrating Campo Eye Care, the seat to a smart Medicare ecosystem. Please join me to welcome Mr. Xu. Should I start? Okay, so um, thanks to HST, the invitation to have this opportunity to introduce our solutions to uh, the audience. And thanks to uh, Preston and Chairman Professor Mark Lin, and thanks for the association and the audience. So we started with the uh, simple thing. So the topic is the seed, and we'll focus on the product line we call I care by the line. First thing is at Combo. Combo is a ODM company. So which were the uh, number one, the largest computing ODM, which means that over 40% of the notebook is manufactured by Combo. We also have very good and strong design capability. So uh, for the uh, IF, we rank at uh, number six. And then we're also among 500 uh, fortune companies ranked 390. Our innovation includes for the healthcare, we have some award and we also do AI researches as well. Our competence, uh, we're, we're a big company, so our infrastructure is strong and we have uh, in innovation, including 5G, AR, VR, AR, IoT. We have very good relationship with our government, so we help our central government regarding IT and IT services to link this together. We also help with the domestic government to help them build cloud public system and also provide them, say for the COVID-19 period, the uh, lesson things and all the IT and IS uh, services. The other things we'll say is that the, for the uh, long-term care, um, the, 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 the industry, we already have over 600 uh, ERP customers and we are helping them to managing over 250 senior cases served by uh, 33,000 caregivers. So that's formed a very good channel for us to bring information and the services to the end users. This shows how uh, we see the AIoT stack. Uh, you know that here we have five segments. Later on, we'll give you more examples. The first is the wellness and the fitness. We also have the IoT devices, platform, smart hospital, and telehealth. And we follow the uh, very standard stack uh, for the IT, for the bottom, the devices, and for the top, the ASI. And today I'm going to introduce is the, uh, this place where is the uh, long-term care services IT and our 
IW care, which is uh, started with the diabetes patients and now extended to the hospital to patient CRM system. The five segments we have these products and the, we have limited time, so I just skip it. If, you, if you're interested, uh, you can ask me for the size. From these, uh, say, five, 10 years experiences, we do have a lot of lessons and we learn something. But first thing is that we noted that the information system of the medical and healthcare segment is quite fragmented, which means that we bear legacies over decades. And for each hospital with scale, they're using over 1,000 functions. They're not building one day, they're building decades. So when they need a new data structure or new database, they just create one as well. So that becomes very, very fragmented. And that also is a barrier for a new technology to bring in. And the second thing is that um, it's an old system, but it's a new system because it's spent so long of the time. So it becomes super fat, which means the data schema, the format can be 40 years old and we're using, still using some technologies that already 20 years old. There are also some non-technical issues because the doctors have their style, some old doctors, they have their habits. And for the hospital, the medical things, if there's any failure, the cost is very, very high. The last thing probably is the cross-boundary things. There are a lot of jargons between different uh, medical and the IT. And we do have a very different ROI calculations. So what do we learn? There are a lot of things we learn, but today I'm going to share with you the first thing is that we should start with simple things, which means we can start with the caring, not the medical, but the caring ERP. And, and we can bring that to public his, not for the hospital, not for the clinic, they're already very complicated, but we can go with the public uh, his, which has the standard and the uniform interfaces. And we try to extend to the CRM first. So regarding the cross-boundary things, we can do is to bring ecosystem. So we're going to uh, develop, to find and share with the medical segments, business models such as e-commerce and try to provide a POC, which is proof of concept, proof of services and the proof of business opportunities to form this ecosystem. So what's the first things? The first thing is quite a simple. Look at this one. The, at the bottom are the users. This is one example of what we call Taiwan long-term care. They need the ERP, so we build the ERP. So who is using or who are the major roles? The first one is the daycare centers. Now we have in Taiwan over 500 daycare centers. They don't have ERP to use, or they're using paperwork, or they're using very, very limited or, or simple uh, Excel or a web interface to do the management. So they need the ERP, and then we build cloud ERP for them. The similar things is that the, day, the caregivers to home. Right now, we already have over 1,200 the uh, the uh, two home offices. So we build a cloud. So similarly, we need to help them using our ERP and connect to the central government and to the local government. And besides that, we help them to link with the families and the hospitals. So we do have the cloud fees for the hospital, sorry, for the public hospitals. And then we also have the, we call the IDAB care, which is for the uh, chronic diseases, man case management for the hospitals and clinics. So when we're doing this for uh, over five years, we accumulated a lot of the uh, customers and the phone scales. For example, now currently we have 50 
um, day care center using our services. We have 600 uh, home care offices. They form the 2B business, which is B2B business. And then we also have uh, the system serves over uh, 33 caregivers, which forms the uh, B2C. Uh, they're the professional, but they're individuals. And for the others, we have uh, 250 cases or one cases, probably is one or more families. And we already have uh, a lot of the uh, uh, diabetes management here. So with this, we can do more things. So we can transform from the ERP to more business, that is the ecosystems. But the first thing is that these professional, they need online education, they need their certification, they need to grow their career with the knowledges. So we build the I learn for the talents. And for this, no matter what they're to be or to see, they need supplies medical or non-medical supplies. So we build I shop for e-commerce. And for the central government, what we're doing is to provide individuals their own data. Here in Taiwan, we call my data and also the open data, which probably is the uh, uh, not so critical, but a statistical data to provide to uh, individual or to the research institute. So with this, um, daycare centers and these offices, we then find places for startups to have their uh, trials, which include 5G, XR, IoT, XR means AI and the uh, VR. Also, there is some share economy can get into this business and share our customers. And of course, our IW care is now from the case management to extend to the CRM for the hospitals. So that's the simple things. And with scale and enough customers, we go further into the, the uh, ecosystem. So the different partners can join. These are the award. Uh, I think that is the uh, last year we got the uh, medical uh, quality award and the uh, and this is this shows that the, the, the very simple scenario for the daycare and home care scenarios. So the first thing is the mostly the family will call a number which is uh, one nine two two for long term care two point zero support. And our government will and the government will go with the hospital doctors or specialists to home to do the assessment. Then they will make the plan, execute the plan for for the. Uh, for the uh, senior case site, they will have, say, for the first thing, um, caregivers to home to do services, while they will using our ER ERP to do video conferencing. If there are some unexpected things they would like to share with the office or the family, and all these services, they will be recorded, uh, checked, and monitored. For the family, yes, they can do the uh, video conference with the caregivers who is already at home and to see what the true actual situations is. And they can read the uh, physiological data, which is uh, recorded at the wrong time and send it to the family. And they also have a contact book, which they can understand what happened, how is their family or the senior people is good taken care of and they also can see the photos and notifications of the services or any alarms that should be uh, sent to the family members so for this of course we can uh, necessary or ERP support that scheduling for the uh, elderly person from home or from center to hospital for the return visit and the and as for the care center um, we, our ERP will support transfer, transportation services, scheduling, meals, activity planning, um, medicine taking or taking care, and of course, uh, the signal uh, measuring things. So this is the typical um, scenario for long-term care. Um, 
so you can see there is some uh, app, the app, app, app point of view, the dashboard, uh, dashboard point of view, the calendar view, and all the views. And we have helped do the T uh, TOCC uh, for cases and for caregivers as well. The second thing is the second uh, major product or service is the uh, IDAB Care. Uh, um, we're trying to do this providing hospital to patient for telecare management, which can extend medical services to home and the community. So we're going to say more about this. We're doing this not only for ERP, we're making devices, we're making the test materials. So this is a spec. They connect to the APP with Bluetooth, and then all this data will be keep track in the cloud and send it to the family, send it to the uh, to the doctors when they're, they're, they're in the uh, um, clinic, and also send to the case man, uh, case, uh, uh, care managers as well. Pretty good, including the uh, glucose, the uh, uh, CHOL and the urine as well. The needs from the ecosystem, the major players are doctors. Doctors need to very quickly consolidate information. So they need to link into the IWK ERP. The case managers, they're working very hard. So one case manager need to take probably over a hundred cases and that is uh, very challenging and labor job for them. So we need ERP to help them prioritize. We need the AI to help them to speed up and reduce the labor work. So how do those things they need to do is to reduce the cost and enhance their quality. And the other thing is that family and families, they form very strong support to our patients or our cases. And our cases requires very simple app and devices. So they don't have to learn a lot. And there are a lot of partners like uh, test drives, advertisement, others, other service providers can also join this as well. So from that, this, we can build our solution to the ecosystem for them. The doctors can use their HIS, so integral ERP with the HIS. And the care managers they will have a very good and very handy tools, the web tool, the app tool, to save their time. And if there is any alert or, uh, or, or the uh, communications, they can use this very conveniently. That is the most value for these uh, case managers. So the other things will be families, they can care, and for com communities, they can share. So we extended that from simple case management over the, the data measuring to a higher level of hospital CRM. So when we're trying to provide better services to patients, we want to provide services outside the hospital to their home or even to the daycare center. So for this, when the, our patient is at home, they can use our system or an APP. We have a chat bot, a device which department to register and search for the nearby clinics. And our ERP provide di diaries uh, for the cases. So this diary will share with managers and the nutritionist. So they can provide you very good counseling services. And then we have the uh, money things. That is, uh, I think, very popular. But uh, the thing is that doctor can, we using his his system to look at the data from the uh, patients. And then we use this as a communication to do education uh, and also the, the uh, event reminding. And then we're using AI to build a smart search for the food. So take a picture and you will see the nutrition of that uh, food or that meal or that uh, anything of the material that is edible. Okay, this is a scenario we call it the hospital uh, CRM scenario. The first thing is that the doctor, once the case is made, then the program starts. And then the case at home, the senior people, 
or the elderly people or the diabetes. They can have devices uh, to, to and apps to record the data. And the third thing is that the case manager, they can monitor and dialogue with the cases, dialogue with the families. And the family can see from the contact book and all this marine data is required and they communicate with the patients or the, or the elderly. And uh, of course, when we return to, uh, to the clinic hospital for a written visit, the progress and advices can be done. We also see that with this, we form a case-centric ecosystem. So care managers, communities, also the business, the easy channels will provide the uh, fulfillment or online offline services. And of course, the medical suppliers, they can do promotion, they can do uh, subscription things to get into the ecosystem. So the overall uh, I, I doubt care, we have five differential key features. The first thing is we combine Taylor, which is remote, medical, which is medical and the care together. Different combination resulting different solutions. And then we are trying to provide proactive, which means that even before they know something happened, what we'll inform the users, uh, which can be the patient, can be the case manager, can be the families, what is going to happen, and they can take uh, preparations or precautions. Of course, this is a very uh, ease of use interface and we do it professionally. And finally, all this data can be analyzed, provide better business operation and reduce risk. Some of this, so this is the uh, remote medical at the hospital. So uh, doctors can from his head see the data. These are the, I think this is the true data uh, we take pictures from our uh, customer, and the this is a very simple, easy, easy to use patient. The uh, icon nice, uh, very easy to use, uh, not complicated. So uh, elder people maybe they have uh, not a not a very good eyesight, but still see very clearly and use it. So family and friends can share the AI. AI will recognize and recommend. And you can also record the uh, uh, food to share with your care manager. And we provide the health report in a very professional uh, style. Okay, and this is uh, how we're doing with our AI um, and our food. So with this, uh, this is also the true. So you smart search for uh, for your uh, food recording and uh, the food, and they will calculate automatically for you the nutrition. Okay, uh, for example, this is in Chinese and this is in uh, English. Okay, so I'll try to skip to, uh, I don't have much time of this, I believe. Okay, so I'm trying to skip more the, uh, you something I would like to share with you is the ecosystem, probably. Okay, so finally, I, I would like to share you that the, we're doing things first thing first. The ecosystem is changing, so we need to focus on the policy first and work with companies and the providers. So that's the first thing first. So when we ever do that, then we will be forming a very good ecosystem, the public segment and the industry and the education and the research segment. So today I would like to share is this slide that which we should looking forward to this from the ICT uh, industry point of view. And that's conclude my uh, presentation today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Xu, for your insightful words. It is indeed our pleasure to learn from the leading players in the field of smart healthcare. Last but not least, I'm pleased to convene all the speakers today to join a panel discussion moderated by Mr. Qi Zhenling. 
For our online viewers, you are welcome to scan the QR code and leave your questions in the Slido. Please note that Professor Hong is not able to join us later. So if you have any questions to Mr. Hong, please submit it along with your contact information for us to get back to you through emails. Thank you. Mr. Ling, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Richard, Sam, uh, Dr. Huang and uh, Dr. Hong. Unfortunately, Dr. Hong is not going to join us in the panel discussions. So I have uh, a few questions on hand. I will uh, read all the uh, questions and then ask uh, all the speakers uh, to uh, to answer to the questions uh, by their own. The first question is, is there any doctor assigned to the mission? For instance, who read the statistics statistics and the decided distribution of the patient in the ambulance. I think this question might, uh, might go to uh, Dr. Wong and uh, uh, Mr. Tai. And uh, the second question is, video conference is important for telehealth. Do you think that current video conference software such as Webex is good enough for telemedicine? Well, I think uh, uh, both uh, uh, all the speakers can answer this question. Uh, to Dr. Xu, how do you ensure, ensure that the information of the patients have cyber security? Of course, security is important. Okay. And uh, to Dr. Huang, how to quickly find a typical AMI? And then to Dr. Huang again, in the ambulance, how to deal with heart failure patients who require respiratory care, uh, for instance, inhalation of bronchodilators, re respirator parameter adjustment, airway assessment and the treatment, etc. Okay, uh, I will ask ask uh, whether uh, Sam, do you have any? Uh, question or response to all the questions? Sam, uh, please open your microphone. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, any time in, in our system, uh, the doctor, doctor will join the mission. But in Taiwan's, uh, in the, in Taiwan's law, uh, which hospital patient will be sent to is a decide, uh, first priority decided by patient. And the EMT can give them their advice. Okay. This is my, my answer, okay? Thank you. Yes, I, I think uh, the cooperation is very important. So uh, yes. judgment in the ambulance and then uh, sent to the most appropriate uh, center is the uh, is one of the uh, the key to success in this uh, system. Uh, the, the second one, uh, uh, will Richard answer uh, all, any of the questions? Do you have any words to say? Okay, so President Mark Lin, thank you very much. I think that for the um, video conferencing, uh, we need to we need to start with the scenarios so when we're talking about video conferences our assumed scenario is for conferencing but when we go to the telemedicine or the um, telecare we're facing a very different scenario for example they don't have a big screen right and they probably they only have the phone so how can they do that so i think the first thing is we need to define the scenario so from our case we define our scenario that the, the caregivers, they only have the phone, they use the phone. And for the caregivers, they use their um, monitors. But most important of all is, according to law or regulation, we need to archival this video conferences for seven years. And this channel must be secured, which is encrypted, and it can be audited. So that's, I think, we need to define different scenarios for different cases. Once doctor asked me, say, I want to do remote uh, medical, and can you do face recognition for me? 
So that's also one important things that to make sure they are the same patient over that end of the uh, video conferences. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, most of the question will go to Dr. Huang. Uh, Dr. Huang, do you want to respond to uh, some of the questions? Uh, President Martin, thanks so much for your uh, question. I think the first question is a database, how to manage the database or pre-hospital because uh, it divides to different part of the da database uh, from pre-hospital uh, because sent by ambulance from ambulance from from they received the phone call of the patient or patient's family and the ambulance on the side and which is ambulance now we have uh, the e uh, system to record the ambulance uh, records and uh, uh, after they reach the hospital so hospital we in charge of database. So in before the hospital, the database uh, should be managed by five bureau in Taiwan. So is ambulance staff they will trans transmit all the data onto uh, into the uh, five bureau database management. Uh, and the after hospital uh, at this moment actually uh, all the hospital have the uh, database of the AMI by themselves. Uh, so if we want to uh, integrate between the hospital, so it should be managed by the local government uh, department of health system. So in Kaohsiung city, actually we we have uh, the uh, 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 EMOC system. So in department of health, they will collect uh, uh, AMI, acute myocardial infarction data or stroke data uh, from uh, each hospital every month. But the item, so we should set up the item just like a Excel or, uh, or registration uh, system or website, depend on different city. Actually, as I know, uh, in Tainan city, they also set up the city uh, in recent two years. So all the hospital will, trans will transfer all the AMI, STEMI uh, database depend on the requirement of the Department of Health. Uh, so so the, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for example, in Kaohsiung City, we have a STEMI about uh, 1,000 cases uh, per year. So uh, the government, uh, the local government will uh, stay, make a statistic and uh, provide the database to hospital or pre-hospital or after hospital to improve the quality of the care for the AMI from, from pre-hospital to hospital. Uh, recently, uh, our uh, government department of the welfare and the healthy care system, uh, care, they initiated a program. They try to integrate pre-hospital system and uh, in-hospital system uh, together. So recently they start to set up the system from the old car out of hospital cardiac arrest. And uh, later on they will call, uh, integrate the trauma data and also acute myocardial infarction data and the shock data. Actually the, this, is, this disease all time sensitive disease. So we have saved the patient as soon as possible. So the, uh, to improve the quality care of this disease, the Department of Health in Taiwan uh, organized this uh, project for three or four years to try to integrate the data. Because uh, as I mentioned before, the pre-hospital and the in-hospital, actually at this moment they don't uh, integrate together. So sometimes you have to uh, get the data very difficult to connect it together. So I think uh, Department of Health uh, Care, uh, <clears throat> Department of Welfare and the Care uh, Healthy in Taiwan uh, to organize this program is very good uh, to connect all the pre-hospital and uh, after hospital, in hospitals data in one platform so we can connect together to uh, see the better result of the patient. For example, if the patient did the ECG on the ambulance, uh, but uh, in final, the fire bureau, they don't know which patient get a steamy because only hospital know which which one is steamy 
but the hospital uh, ambulance staff they they have to ask the hospitals but some hospital they may be uh, refused to uh, answer the question so we need a platform to connect all the database together to improve the quality of care for for this the time sensitive uh, disease care in taiwan and about the video conference the question on video conference i am very uh, uh, agree with the uh, uh, richard's answer because uh, it's not the video conference it's only uh, the scenario is one by one or one by two so usually you you only need the uh, usually we use a uh, just um, smartphone to uh, <coughs> connect and uh, uh, teach online instruction huh, to let them know what, what should they do actually in sense system the ECP, e, uh, ecpr system they also have uh, this uh, video uh, online instruction system uh, in their system maybe Sen can share some of experience to us and and also for the uh, quit find a typical ami uh, actually as we know the acute myocardial infarction can divide into the uh, steamy and non steamy st elevation myocardial infarction and the non st ele elevation myocardial infarction the main purpose of the ECG is to diagnose of STEMI. So actually, we can only find the STEMI, but not non-STEMI. So the STEMI, uh, we use uh, this system to uh, <clears throat> to uh, uh, diagnose it, early diagnose the STEMI on the ambulance. So we can transfer to the right hospital and the direct transfer. But for the, a typical ECG, the ECG is not the uh, uh, it's not the uh, typical ECG. Actually, many doctors is even doctor is difficult to find uh, find the right answer because, uh, as we show in the slide, uh, for the cardiologist diagnosis STEMI, the uh, accuracy about the ninety percent. That means another ten percent. Maybe they didn't get the right answer. And also emergency and uh, doctor also uh the accuracy about 80 percent so another 20 percent maybe uh they didn't find the, the steamy so ai system how can we uh, how can we anticipate the ai system so maybe a system i think don't see or don't think ai system can better than than doctor i think maybe 70 to 80 percent is the excellent for the ai system and also, as I mentioned, non steamy Actually, recently, there's uh, many company produce uh, uh, high sense state opening eye. So, you uh, in some of country they put the, the uh, machine on the uh, ambulance, so they can uh, take a blood and uh, uh, test uh, the opening eye. If opening eye increase, maybe we can diagnose it of the high uh, non steamy but uh, in Taiwan, because the Taiwan is small, so some of the uh, hospital uh, is very near, maybe uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, sometimes uh, 30 minutes is very few. But in other country, maybe American or China, they are big country, so they may need a uh, transfer for half or uh, one hour. So you have time to check the high sensitivity troponin on the ambulance. And also, as I mentioned, in American system, they just like uh, uh, MBG department outside the hospital, they have uh, seven professional paramedical. Some can do the intubation, and some can do the ECG, and uh, another one can do the blood sampling. So they have uh, another manpower to do this one. But in Taiwan, usually we only have two paramedical. If we do the main, uh, ECG and the uh, uh, medication and also bus sample sometimes it may be too difficult to the Taiwan ambulance so but uh, in future maybe we have a more sensitive the device to detect the chopping eye just like a uh, brush sugar you just need uh, one needle to check the uh, brush sugar so we can diagnose this this atypical AMI like non steamy on the ambulance very quickly I think it's not the dream in the future it may be very quick to uh, <clears throat> to reach our dream. And uh, the last question about uh, the heart failure patient need uh, respiratory care. 
but because uh, our topic is uh, acute myocardial infarction and also ambulance on the ambulance, usually on the ambulance we will not uh, treat the patient with uh, ventilator, and only the patient transfer for one hospital to hospital. They will uh, use the ventilation, and so for the ventilation adjustment, usually if the patient transfer for ventilation, they will accompany by doctor or nurses, so they will take care of the ventilator, but not the ambulance staff to take care of the, the ambulation or or uh, the setting or other uh, other medical issue. Uh, thanks for your uh, question. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Wang. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Richard Sam uh, for to uh, answering all the questions. And uh, I believe that uh, the there will be more questions uh, from the audience. So uh, on the way of waiting for more questions, I have uh, also want to uh, share my uh, belief that uh, because we are talking about telehealth and uh, the two major parts of it, it is uh, one of the uh, technology and the other is the medical professional. And I believe that it is not only the technology that can help. And uh, for the medical uh, systems, I think uh, cooperation is very important. That is the reason why we believe that nothing can be achieved without collaborative efforts. So uh, even though we have uh, all the equipment and uh, all the, uh, the softwares, we still have to deal with a lot of challenges. And uh, the, actually the questions have asked us uh, what would be important during uh, uh, some of the value uh, dialogue. Uh, for instance, asking for the cyber security, of course, is it important. But uh, when you have only 30, sec 30 seconds to save a life, sometimes uh, security is not the uh, top priority. So we have to choose between the, the values and to decide on the priority. And uh, sometimes uh, our judgment might not be the best one, but it might be the most uh, convenient one. So uh, I believe that uh, uh, when we are choosing or using the telemedicine, we are not choosing the best one. We are choosing the most convenient one and most effective one to save our clinical progress. So uh, I think uh, this is, uh, uh, those questions are important and your answers are very uh, comprehensive and I believe so. So is there any question from the participant? Or is there any other words uh, our speakers want to say? May I add Re some? To yes, the... Richard, please. Yes, yes, okay. Regarding the uh, question three, I would like to add that the, uh, of course, the, I think the business, Professor Lin has given us a very clear and accurate direction that the most convenient because we don't have time to do the, uh, optimization and the judgment but for the securities if we have time the cyber security is always the top priority and the security is just like police and the thief always someone want to break in and then we need to defense and the for this field i think security cyber security specifically mentioned to the privacy so how they protect the privacy? There are two ways to protect our privacy. One is from the information technology, one is from the operation procedures. So from the uh, information technologies, it's not complete, but we already have some uh, encryption, decryption, the uh, the uh, the identification and the scrambling distributed system. And for the procedures, for the environmental, for the operation procedure, for the uh, emergency exception handlings, already something like there, like the HIPAA, like ISO 27000, and also we have the GDPR guideline. So for that, I believe this is a very important question because they're always thieves and the police yes. robber. Uh, actually, yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, thank you, Richard. And uh, do you have something, anything to say, uh, Sam? Anything more to say? Uh, I I answer the question to uh, the uh, sorry, let me a moment. Uh, the video is import, Im, important, but I I think in my opinion the web is is not good enough for telemedicine. 
because uh, many uh, patients medical records uh, like uh, exam data and the uh, patients all all the patients med medication history uh, not not be combined into the into the system so doctor need more information uh, of patient to 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 make sure can can get a, a complete medical data so uh, in the in this way and uh, the system must have have such functions uh, uh, sorry that can can to e evaluate patient okay thank you thank you sam uh, any uh, final remarks from uh, dr Huang? Uh, uh, yes, I, I think the telemetry is not dream because 10 years before in Taiwan, there's no pre-hospital EGD system. But uh, now because of advance of the company and uh, uh, and also technology, so we can advance set up the system in uh, 20 city or county in Taiwan and also advance more, more uh, smart city uh, in the future. I think 10 years later, it will be total difference. Uh, compare with now, so okay. we should uh, look forward to see uh, the better of the uh, healthy care. Thank you. Yes, I think technology is de developing very quickly. So uh, a question uh, ten years ago might might not be a question uh, right now, and uh, the question now is might might not be a question ten years later. So I think uh, we look forward to more uh, prog progress of the technology. And I believe that can, we can solve uh, even more questions uh, be, uh, afterwards. And uh, because it seems that there is no more questions, so uh, maybe I may uh, make a final uh, remarks uh, before closing. Uh, before the end of this forum, uh, please allow me to explain that JCT established Health Smart Taiwan, namely H. ST in 2019 to provide healthcare institutions integrated information on the application of information technology and that promote cross industry exchanges on smart healthcare. So for questions and answer in this forum due to time limit, you are welcome to contact HST to arrange further discussions and smart Healthcare include combination of technology, applications, processes, and the medical services providers. In terms of personal training, personnel training, and the process re-engineering, ZCT, as an international accreditation agency, hold a leading position in improving healthcare quality and the patient safety. It has launched JCT quality and the safety program, which can provide hospitals with customized training classes. Please contact us through the QR code if you are interested. Thank you for your participation. I hope that today's sharing and discussion can bring you innovative ideas and the clinical applications experiences. Look forward, to, look forward to meeting you soon in future forum or after the pandemics. So stay home and stay healthy. Best wishes. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Lin, for moderating this fruitful panel discussion for us, which has concluded our forum today. Our best wishes go to all the speakers and the online viewers around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to present better events in the future for you, please scan the QR code and fill in the questionnaire for us. Thank you so much for your support. Session two of the International Smart Healthcare Forum will be taking place at Taipei time, 2 p.m. on August 6th. It is going to be a sharp and cutting edge talk among more esteemed leaders in the industry. Please stay tuned to the Smart Life on smartcityonline.org.tw. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you very much. Keep Thank safe. You. Mm. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.